I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to install a pair of the Driven TT rear sets on our 2015 STG Honda Grand. Okay, here we go. We're going to dive right in. Okay, I want to tell you a couple of things up front. Obviously, it comes with full instructions. They're recommending torque wrench. They give you a list of tools that you're going to need. Uh, talk about using Loctite, right? Impact gun, all that. And those are helpful. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to do it. It's going to vary from that just a little bit. I would encourage you that if you haven't wrenched a lot, follow those instructions. You can see right up front, we're going to lose all this ugly and replace it with this gorgeous TT rear set from Driven. Now, okay, so passenger pegs, they're out of here. They are no more. The rear brake light switch is going to be another challenge that's going to be in there. If that means something to you and you feel like you need to retain it, we're going to have to put in a hydraulic actuated banjo bolt right back here. You would then wire it into the brake light switch wires. Very easy to do. We'll actually do a video on that on this bike to show you that down the road. But up front, I want to let you know you're going to lose these and you're going to lose that. To me, the passenger pegs, I don't know why they're on here. This is a tiny little motorcycle. Two big people on this bike would just be really awkward. That's my personal opinion. Um, and the brake light for me, that's meaningless, right? We've still got our brake light up here with the front brake lever, which is going to be used to activate that. So I have no concern for that. Beyond that, this project is a little bit different than if you watched our Z125 Pro video. That was pretty easy. This one is a little more complex. And I say that because the main bolt that holds the rear sets on actually holds the swing arm to the frame of the motorcycle. So we're gonna to need to support the motorcycle from the bottom so the swing arm can hang just a little bit, allowing us to get that bolt out. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. I have the advantage of having a work table where the front is clamped in. You may or may not have that, so you're gonna to have to be a little more creative with that, okay, in order to allow you to pull that bolt out, push it back in. It might require the help of some friends. You know, right up front, one idea that I had real quickly was it would also involve, unfortunately, taking the exhaust off, which is really easy. You could remove the exhaust and then use like a mill crate style MX stand underneath, right? You could lift the bike up from the back, set it up on the stand, and then it would just kind of hang. So you could do that as well. You wouldn't want to try that with the exhaust on there. I think you would damage the pipe. So if you go through it and you just think about it for a minute, there'd be a lot of ways to support the bike. The brake light switch, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the side panel in the seat so I can remove the brake light switch. I don't want to zip tie it in place, I want to just remove it and do a good clean job. Tools that are needed for this. I've got a 6 mil Allen socket as well as an Allen wrench. 5 mil T-handle, 4 to go with the 6. Got a pair of side cutters, a little awl. Phillips screwdriver, Loctite, got a 9 and a 10 wrench, a 12 mil socket, a 10, a 19, a 14, and then a couple of ratchets. Okay, first step, we're going to take the seat off. Put your ignition key in the release here. Go ahead and grab onto the back of the seat. Just kind of give it a, you got to give it a little, like a, a push up, all right, and then you got to kind of pull back. You can see the release is right here. And then you want to make sure, obviously, that when you put it back on, this tang slides through that. Now that we have the seat off, we're going to partially remove the body panel over here on the right side. Got our 5 mil T-handle here. We'll remove that little cover. I'm not going to take the panel all the way off the bike. I'm just going to loosen it up quite a bit so that I can move it around to gain access. 
allowing me to simply unplug the brake light switch. The fasteners are all in plain view. As you would expect, this is a Honda. It's put together real nicely. The Kawasaki is a nice bike too. I enjoy that one. I think it's a little better looking personally. But uh, the build quality is just an area where Honda has always really kind of kicked ass. I and mean, it's been the hallmark of their company for years. Got a little push pin back here, right? Right there. And then last, but certainly not least, there's a 10 mil head fastener right here. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this and just kind of contort it just a little bit. We don't want to get crazy, but I want to take this bolt out here that holds the brake reservoir on. You could take the other fasteners out. Um, I'm not going to. Because old habits die very hard. From back in the day, wrenching at the Cadillac dealership all the time, you always strive to take off as little as possible in order to gain access. And I can't seem to let go of that. Okay, you can see that I took the bolt that holds the rear brake reservoir out of the way, and then right here is the connector for that brake light switch, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out so we can all have a look. Slide the cover back, and you can see it's already coming disconnected, right? Let's go ahead and just uh, do that. You don't want to pull on the wires themselves, okay? You don't want to damage it, so be cognizant of that. Make sure you pull the protective boot over. We don't want anything shorting out down the road, causing issues, right? So make sure these are all in position, nothing is touching. Uh, just a little safeguard here, could be just a little bit of electrical tape, all right? Like so, that's just so. We don't have to go back in there down the road. Slide that protective sleeve back over. Come on up in here, I'm gonna put that right back in place and then take that loom and just kinda push it over. That should hold it nicely if you feel the need put a cable tie there i'm going to go ahead now and just bolt back up the rear brake reservoir and then we'll put this trim panel back on okay now before i lift the bike up right i want to break this loose we've got a 19 mil on this side this side is the nut the other side is the actual hex head for that long bolt. Remember that bolt passes all the way through the uh, swing arm to the other side of the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and break this loose now. And I'll put my backup ratchet over there. And at this point, I'm gonna take the nut completely off on this side. Because the bolt passes out, through the clutch side of the bike, right? When I say clutch side, in reference to the lever, we're gonna begin on the shift side, which is opposite of what I would normally do. I normally like to start over on the brake side and then move over to the shift side. We're gonna come over here now and remove this shift rod from the stock shift knuckle, okay? There's a cover right there that needs to come off. And then there is a cotter pin that we need to break loose. Okay, we got the boot off. Uh, it's gonna be best to get this cotter pin out over here. You see I'm using kind of an awl to just spread this thing back together. Okay, and that's gonna allow the removal, obviously. Save it, you won't be reusing it. Same design as we saw on the Z, right? Where it just slid right through, so this will definitely tighten up the tolerance. Okay, now that I have that out of the way, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use, you know, because you know, I'm up here on the work tape, I'm just gonna grab this floor jack and uh, use this to jack up the bike temporarily. 
Okay? And you can see I'm going just enough, right, that it's relieving the pressure back here. I'm going to go to the other side of the motorcycle and I'm going to push the bolt through. Now we've got a couple of spacers that are here. All right, there's one on each side. I want you to watch for them and listen for them because they will fall out as you're removing the bolt. I'm gonna stop here. We're gonna get the 12 millimeter socket on a T-handle. And we're gonna run this bolt out. Okay, now grab onto that and kind of wiggle it around. There's that spacer that I was talking about, okay? Put that to the side. Obviously keep the bolt. It wouldn't, it's not a bad idea to maybe put a little grease on that bolt. It's gonna be in there a long time and that'll just ensure that you'll be able to get it out years down the road. And we're gonna be replacing this gigantic footrest with our driven rear set. Okay, we are ready to install. The TT rear sets, right, show you where the foot peg adjustments are in relation to stock. Zero, zero is stock. You're able to go up, and you're also able to go up and back, or back, but the same vertical. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to move them back from stock. I don't need them any higher because I want to keep as much room as I can. So here's a good place to use Loctite. Right? I'm not going to do that because this is a project bike. We're just going to be taking this thing back apart at some point. So I am going to forego the Loctite, line that up. And snug that while I'm here. I want to check the torque on the other fasteners that were pre-installed from Driven just to make sure that we're good to go. No surprises down the road. Folding toe piece, this is adjustable as well. Three positions to choose from. I'm gonna leave it all the way out. I think I'm gonna need the lever length. And uh, just like the other stuff I've done from them, everything's tight, we're good to go. Okay, now, doing nothing to the shifter. We are gonna have to rotate this, right? We're gonna do that after the fact. Right now, all I wanna do is get the rear set back on the motorcycle. Should double check that hind joint real quick too. Just make sure we're all goody good there. All right. Now, spacers, they are all supplied, they are all packaged with each rear set, you know, one for the shift side, one for the brake side, so you won't mix them up, unless of course you open your packages, shuffle it all around, right here, the uppermost spacer, remember put a thin coat of grease on the bolt, just standard grease is going to be fine, same thing you would lube bearings with right and now and you want to be cool with the bike here we don't want to really be yanking on this thing too terribly much right because let's face it this is kind of sketchy and odds are whatever you're doing at home it's probably going to be sketchy too so this is one of those projects where having a second set of hands Probably not going to be a bad idea. Okay, there we go. Flip 
like so. I'm going to tighten the lower fastener. Just snug that up for right now. Okay, now that puts us in a position where I'm going to be able to take this sketchy floor jack off the work table, set the bike back down, and we'll go start on the other side. Okay, now we're going to come over here. We've got the bike back down. All right, you can see I don't have the bolt pushed through all the way. That's just going to make this more difficult. Bike back down on the ground. Go ahead and take out the remaining fastener. You can see the way that I kind of put this project together. I really tried to reduce the amount of time that I had the motorcycle um, supported in a very sketchy manner. Tried to reduce that as much as possible. Okay. In my opening tool list, I did not include the fact that I needed an 8 millimeter socket back here uh, for the brake master cylinder that was Dalton's fault because he was supposed to get this stuff all lined out and you know par for the course the kid forgot something but that's okay I'm here to bail him out go ahead and get these fasteners for the master out these are going to thread out with a little bit of difficulty because there is absolutely from the factory going to be thread locker on these Okay, this is a spot where I would encourage using thread locker as per the instructions. Okay, master cylinder off. Now we need to get this cotter pin right here released. Okay, now for the cotter pin, need to spread this bad boy out. Pivot for the master here for the pedal. This will be reused. If you happen to damage it, don't worry about it. You can easily pick something like this up at your local hardware. In a pinch, you could also substitute, I would say, a little bit of uh, safety wire. I'll probably go a long way back here. Squeeze that together. And pull it through. Push the pin through. You have to rotate it around a little bit. And it looks like you may actually have to get a pair of snaffling pliers here on that pivot because the way this pin is in there, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get this rascal out of there without uh, more clearance. Really close. Kind of see I've kind of got it on the edge here. Ha ha! There you go. No need to do that. Let's grab the side cutters and just kind of contort it a little bit. We're going to leave all this together. There is no use for any of this. Once again, with the rear set kit, a couple of things we need to do. I got to tighten up my foot peg, right? I'm going to open up with that. I want to check all the fasteners on it, make sure they're tight, and then we'll begin installing this on the motorcycle. Okay, we are ready to install. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the brake pedal off of the driver rear set. This is going to make putting the cotter pin in a lot easier. Okay. And slide that there. Maybe necessary to adjust the pedal. We'll deal with that. Uh, course after the fact I put a little bit of grease on this pivot that is just going to make sure that we have really good smooth action 
on the brakes. Make sure that's locked in place. Let's get our cotter pin back in there. I was able to uh, reuse that without any issue. I bend the ears back around. Like so. Now we'll grab the rear set. And we'll put this bad boy back together. Six mil T handle. I've got my finger holding the bushing that this threads into until it grabs hold. Keep a little pressure on that with your finger. Like so. Okay, nice smooth action. Now, our Brake Master. This is definitely an area that I would strongly recommend using Loctite. Don't tell my kid Max I didn't. I'd be panicked. All right. Got the spacer in between the rear set. Put the nut on the back. and repeat the process for the other one, and we will tighten up the master cylinder. Okay, now we're ready to bolt up. Big spacer goes over the big bolt. Little spacer down here at the bottom. Got that supplied fastener. Okay, just kind of get that started. Lined up, get the T-handle on it. Threads in there nice and easy. Okay, I don't want to tighten that up. Now I need to go over to the other side of the motorcycle and I need to push this bolt through the swing arm. Like so. And there's the nut. We're ready to tighten this bad boy up now. This is obviously important. You get this torqued. There are torque specs. If you have a torque wrench, now would be a good time. Okay. Got that snugged up. Go ahead and follow my Slugging the one on the bottom, like so. Check the operation here. Okay, everything feels smooth. Adjustment, Yeah, you know, we may need to tweak that. Uh, in order to do that, obviously, you're gonna need to get a wrench in here, right? And deal with the master cylinder. Tolerances are pretty tight back there. It is possible that if I need to adjust this, I may actually need to loosen the rear set and pull it from the bike in order to do that, but I'm not going to do anything there until I sit on the motorcycle and ride it a little bit and see how I feel about it. When we come back, I'll be on the other side working on the shifter. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the shift knuckle, and per the instructions, we need to rotate this, okay, a little bit rearward. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off right now. And like that. And let's move it one step back, like so. And I'm not gonna tighten this, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the fastener in loosely. Now, you'll see that I have the shift rod run all the way down 
threaded heim joint. We're going to do the same on the other side. These rear sets are capable of either standard or GP shift. We are going to roll with standard because I still have my sun riding this, just like the Z. I'd prefer he didn't blow it up by forgetting that it's reverse shift. Okay, now everything is loose. And let's kind of get that. Well, it's it looks tighter than it is. I mean, that's actually pretty spot on. Kind of get myself started here. I like that position and kind of use this position to my advantage as much as I can with this to help keep really nice tolerances back here. All right, so just be cognizant of that when you're tightening this down. Once this project is done, you're going to want to spend a reasonable amount of time dialing in the rear sets. I would also very strongly recommend that after the first couple of rides, grab some wrenches. Let's make sure that everything's still good and tight. Obviously, when you adjust the controls, you want to be wearing the same footwear that you would be wearing when you ride the bike. Okay. Great place for Loctite here. It's horrible that I'm saying that and not doing that, I think, but I think y'all understand why. Okay, now, when we tighten up these heim joints, okay, I like to make sure that they're parallel with each other and not cocked and opposing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that in the same direction that I would have to turn the nut to tighten it. I'm going to hold the shift rod. Like so. Now we will turn the shift rod on the other hind joint so that they're both basically maxed out, okay? And that's just going to really keep them even with one another. That results in a smoother shift motion. Make sure that's all good and snug. The rod would be here if you're going to use GP shift. Okay. I'm going to run around the bike, double check everything, right? Sit on the bike with my favorite pair of riding shoes or boots. Dial all the components in, get them as close as I can for the initial test ride. Okay, there you go. The TT rear certs are installed. Now remember, before you take this motorcycle off for a ride, sit on the bike with the boots or shoes you're going to wear when riding it and take the time to dial the controls in as closely as you can before you take it out. That's just going to save you from coming right back. Also, make sure all your fasteners are tight. If you're not comfortable doing this project, I would say this one's a little more difficult than say the Z125 was, especially with that bolt that runs through the swing arm pivot. Take it in, have a technician do it. Honestly, if you get a couple of buddies together or a friend, you're going to be good to go. Just take your time. You can use this as a resource if you choose to. If you're not comfortable, take it in, play it safe for sure, ride it a bit, and then double check the torque on all your fasteners to make sure you're good to go. I'm Brian Van, and these are the TT rear sets installed on our 2015 STG Honda Ground.